Joining us now, trial attorney Eric Richmond. Uh, so, Eric, you heard Brian's report. It sounds like the judge leaning towards banning the cameras. What do you think he'll ultimately decide, and will he take into account that two of the victim's families do want those cameras in the courtroom? I don't know if he's going to take that into account, but he should take it into account. Uh, trying to read the tea leaves here, and based upon what he, the judge, indicated the other day, it looks like he's leaning towards either restricting or completely banning cameras in the courtroom. And you have to remember, he has both parties in this action, both the prosecutor and the defendant, saying we don't want cameras. They're the actual parties in this action, in this prosecution. And they have clients. And then you have this third party come in, this attorney for this collection of media entities, come in and she has an uphill battle. She's arguing for a client called the public. And she can turn around and there's an empty chair behind her because it's this nebulous client that she has. So her argument is tougher to make. It's tougher to conceptualize. But it's, it's more important, I think, than any other argument that was made the other day because she's arguing for everybody. She's arguing for nobody and everybody. There's no one behind her, and she's representing everybody that has a right to be in that courtroom. That's a constitutional right. That's the freedom of the press. And the fact that the judge is already leaning the other way, he should start off, his default should be leaning towards allowing the press and the camera in the cameras in the courtroom. He's leaning against that. That's what he's indicated so far. So I don't know what he's ultimately going to decide, but I think the default should be allowing cameras in there. There's ways to avoid this circus-type atmosphere that he's afraid of, um, and he referenced the OJ trial. That circus is a, is a constitutional right to have that camera in there, and he can do things to limit um, the press's kind of access in that courtroom. There's lots of options that he has at this point. So, Eric, what's your reaction to the victims' families who say there's been a veil of secrecy around this case? Um, I think that helps the media attorney's argument that they're part of the public. You have to keep in mind that the prosecutor is representing the state, not the families. And this, the families want to say in what's happening, they want to see, they want not just for them to see, but they want the world to see what's happening at this trial. And what I'm guessing a family member would say is, what are you afraid of, judge? What, what are you concerned about? The judge has, by the way, legitimate concerns here where you have witnesses and you have graphic possible photos and testimony. You have witnesses that might be afraid to testify in front of a camera. But I think that the, the balance, when you balance those interests between the public's right to access and to see what's happening, I think it weighs in the public's favor. And when I say the public, I'm including those families. Um, they have the right to know what's happening in this process. And there have been complaints from some of these families from the beginning, as far as communication with the prosecutors and with law enforcement. I don't think all of them, but some of them have had this problem from the outset. So here's a way to possibly correct that, to get the cameras in there, to show everyone what's happening. Um, and the judge has the ability to pull the cameras off, to say, today's testimony, we're going to take the cameras out because there's very graphic or very violent um, photos that are going to be shown to the jury. Let's turn them off today. So the judge can limit the uh, camera access. And the exposure there. Uh, so I found it interesting. Our Brian Entid had just reported that Brian Koberger's family has not visited him in jail. Uh, do you find that significant in any way, Eric? I don't think it's a, on a personal level i think it matters it's significant but for a potential trial and the substance of a of future trial it only matters if that information somehow affects a jury or the jury pool um and they're instructed specifically not to factor that in um their feelings towards you know the family members or how family members have treated him i think it'll matter when this trial starts whether or not he has his family behind him in court that'll be the most important thing for every day and supporting him in court. That vision, that, 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 you know, the way that looks, that appearance, that'll be more important than this information of them not, not being there. They're in a Pennsylvania. I think most of them are, if not all of them, are far away from him. I'm not making excuses for the family not visiting him, but I don't think it has any substantive or any kind of value for what's going to happen at the trial here.
Thank you for watching. Go to NewsNationNow.com to find NewsNation on your television provider. And don't forget to click the red subscribe button below to get more of NewsNation's fact-driven, unbiased coverage.